can climate change be seen? And I start off with three images of flooding. So three uh, images, dramatic images of flooding, uh, one of course very contemporary for us here in the UK in Somerset, are the visual evidence of human-induced climate change. I would say in the case of New Orleans, no. The, uh, at least the legally approved, certified cause of this the majority of that catastrophic flooding in New Orleans uh, was to do with hydraulic engineering of a ship canal Continual dredging and widening meant that the design capabilities of the levees protecting your leads were overtopped at a level of water below what they should have been overtopped at. In the case of Bangkok, the answer is no, because the flooding, the intense rainfall that led to the flooding in Bangkok, at least according to climate scientists, uh, using their modelling techniques, uh, was uh, a natural rainfall phenomenon. In the case of Somerset, is it evidence of climate change? In the case of the Somerset uh, flooding, Dan Williams, a Met Office uh, spokesman, said no, no attribution study has been done of the rainfall uh, this winter that's caused the Somerset floods. Uh, no definitive statement uh, can be made uh, about whether this is in any way connected with human-induced climate change. No, and Patterson, the UK's Environment Secretary, agrees with the Met Office. David Cameron, disagrees. David Cameron uh, tells MPs that he is uh, 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 convinced that these flooding events in the summer levels are linked to climate change. And indeed the person at the bottom right, uh, Miles Allen, uh, then uh, uh, waded in, a in, uh, climate scientist at the University of Oxford, by suggesting that the Prime Minister is right. Uh, that indeed um, he is right to make such a connection and that the increasing levels of climate change would have substantial impacts on rainfall and hence on flooding. So my question, can we see climate change, is actually an extremely difficult question to provide an answer to. And it's a question that over the last 25 years of the public life of climate change and climate change and human causes behind climate change have had public visibility in our societies that many, many people have been wanting to try to find an answer to this question. Whether it is campaigners, whether it is politicians, whether it is scientists, whether it is lay citizens. Can we see climate change? Is this evidence of human caused climate change? So my remarks are around this relationship between seeing and believing. And just to give a couple of other examples from other domains of human inquiry and belief, just to provide a, a, a contrary uh, a frame before I come back to this question. Uh, let's take the case of the Higgs boson. Have you seen the Higgs boson? Has anybody seen the Higgs boson? Well, the high energy physicists at CERN would claim they've seen evidence of the Higgs boson. And what was interesting about their experimentation in the Large Hadron Collider at, at CERN was that actually the belief in the Higgs boson existed for 50 years before there was any empirical evidence that the Higgs boson existed because of the effects that it caused. Belief came before seeing. And actually the seeing is this. This is the Higgs boson. Can you see it? It's there, staring at you. Can't you see it? This was the famous uh, graph compiled from the statistics from the many, many experiments costing uh, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars worth of scientific research, and this is it. This is the Higgs boson. And this little kink in here is the evidence. That's it. That at this particular frequency, the number of decay events that uh, would have been expected if there was no Higgs boson, which is this line, was contradicted by this little kink here, that showed that actually the number of decay events was way higher than they should have been. And that is evidence of the Higgs boson 
exists. And when I say way higher, um, the statistics behind this is way higher. It's basically one in a million chance that that would have occurred purely by statistical proof. So, do we trust the, the, the scientists at CERN? Is that actually evidence of the Higgs boson? Well, let's take another example from an entirely different uh, domain of human uh, knowledge uh, and belief. The famous story in uh, the Christian tradition of one of uh, Jesus' 12 disciples called Thomas, Doubting Thomas. Uh, and the story, as you will perhaps know, or if not after the uh, resurrection of Jesus, he appeared to his disciples, but Thomas was not there. All the other disciples saw the resurrected Jesus, but Thomas did not. And so the following week, when the disciples met again, Jesus appeared a second time, and Thomas, seeing this resurrected uh, Jesus, was able to touch and to feel. And Jesus said to him, uh, Thomas, stop doubting and believe. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. So what is this relationship between seeing and believing? Do we believe in human-caused climate change because we see it? like Thomas, or do we see human-induced climate change because we believe it, like the Higgs boson? This is a live question, just last month, this month actually, January, or well, last month, uh, a paper published by uh, Stuart Capstick and Nick Pitchin, a uh, social psychologist at the University of Cardiff, studying how British citizens interpret severe winter weather in this country in 2010 in particular and also in 2011 and 12 we've had some rather severe winter weather not this winter but but three or four winters in succession in the past and what caps they can pigeon went out to do is to ask citizens was this severe winter weather evidence of global warming of human induced climate change even though it seemed at, the, at face value to contradict all of the projections and predictions that come out of climate models about what should happen to British winters under enhanced greenhouse gas concentrations was this evidence of human-induced climate change? Well, the majority of people said it was. It was evidence of climate change. But what was interesting uh, is that the people who saw that this cold winter weather was evidence of global warming were those people who held the highest degrees of belief that humans cause climate change. Those citizens who had very low levels of belief, or indeed very sceptical that humans cause climate change, did not see in severe winter weather any evidence that humans were causing climate change. You see because you believe. Or not. So this question about can climate change be really made visible and how convincing that visualisation is, is a difficult question. And I just want to refer, um, in my remaining remarks, to um, a, a way of thinking of this question that uh, uh, an anthropologist working on climate change uh, it has suggested uh, just recently in some of the work that he's been doing. Peter Rudyard Gould is his name, an anthropologist uh, from Canada, and, and he's done his work in the Pacific Islands, an area where, with uh, obviously uh, uh, rising seas and attendant risks associated with that. But what Peter Rudyard Gould has suggested in response to this question, can we see climate change, is on the one hand to say, well, there's one position that would say, no, climate change is invisible. He calls them the invisibilists. And for the invisibilists, climate change can only be revealed by sophisticated and precise and expensive scientific inquiry. This is the CERN experimentation with the Higgs boson. So this is climate change. This is climate change made visible by the invisibilists. You can't see a thousand years of northern hemisphere temperature with the big spike on the right here, but the paleoclimatologists, by compiling lots of data, by doing lots of clever statistics, can manipulate the data, put lovely colours on it, and hey presto, here is climate change made visible 
by the invisibilists. So to give an example from the American Psychologist Association Task Force report on climate change from a few years ago, they said because climate change is so hard to detect from personal experience, it makes sense to leave this task to climate scientists. Enter climate scientists. This makes climate change a phenomenon where people have to rely on scientific models and expert judgment or a report in the mass media and where their own personal experience does not provide a trustworthy way to confirm the reports. That's laying out the invisibilist's case. Climate change can only be made visible by the sophisticated and arcane and expensive practices of the climate scientists. And this is what we get. On the other hand, Rudyard Gould will argue there are the visibilists. And the visibilists would say, no, 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 climate change is there in front of you. It's in front of your eyes. We can see the rising sea. We can see the melting ice. We can see the drying continent of Africa. And he quotes the former Prime Minister uh, of uh, Tuvalu, Kola Talaki, uh, a few years ago, saying, flooding is already coming right into the middle of the islands, destroying food crops and trees, which were there when I was born 60 years ago. These things are gone. Someone has taken them. Global warming is the culprit. We have seen it with our own eyes, he said. So these are the visibilists drawing attention to these trustworthy witnesses. Very often, actually, in this discourse, very often these trustworthy witnesses, they're not scientists with PhDs. They're people who are living in particular places with deep ancestral cultural history and mythology, able to see the change invading. And the visibilists then actually are laying out a challenge to the hegemony of the climate scientists. We don't need your climate science. We don't need the uh, <coughs> Western, uh, newsly, uh, accounts of what climate change is. No, we have seen it with our own eyes. And then Rudyard Gould suggests a third category, or a third mode, which he calls the constructive visibilists. These are the people who actually make climate change visible through particular uh, practices. So here, just I give three examples uh, of uh, specific interventions that are made by commentators or by uh, creative artists to make climate change visible. Uh, here, a photoshopped image of a stranded polar bear. This isn't uh, an actual photograph, this is a photoshopped image of a stranded polar bear. And it got into hot water, cold water, um, a, a few years ago in Science Magazine when this image uh, was used by the editor of Science Magazine to illustrate a letter calling for integrity <laughs> amongst climate scientists. Uh, this is an artistic uh, creation uh, at a display in Bristol. Uh, uh, outdoor uh, communal sculptures uh, trying to draw attention to what rising sea levels might mean in uh, Bristol city centre. Uh, and this image here uh, is, uh, if you recognise it, the Houses of Commons and Parliament Square uh, as a paddy field. At some point in the future, this was an exhibition a couple of years ago called Postcards in the Future. So these are the constructive visibilists. Who is doing the telling? Who is doing the constructing here? What are the resources that they bring into play? Does science have any particular privilege? Or what about the trustworthy witnesses, so-called so on the front lines of climate change? What is going on in this constructive visualization? So I leave it there, because this movie now that you're going to see, Chasing Ice, you can make your own mind up. <laughs>